Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the patch 9.1 Retribution Paladin Guide. In this video, I wanted to take a look at everything you need to know, ranging from talents, builds, rotation, uh, cooldown usage, uh, pretty much everything that could be useful to you for taking Red Paladin into raiding. This patch, unlike previous tiers, I actually played Red Paladin as my main for Sanctum of Domination. Um, and since this is the class I have most experience on in this patch, it is the first guide I will be putting out. The first thing I want to cover are the talents. A Red Paladin, fortunately, doesn't have too many talents that you need to swap around from boss to boss. In the first row, 99% of cases you will take Execution Sentence, especially with the new Legendary we use, it's extremely strong. Um, Zeal can be used if you're really trying to just go for AoE damage. Um, on fights like Soul Render, for example, you can use Zeal, but you will lose out on priority damage. For this raid in particular, I recommend just running Execution Sentence on every single fight. In the second tier, again, Blade of Wrath will be the default choice in most cases. Um, anything single target, anything even to two target cleave, you just want to play Blade of Wrath. Now, Also, if you have an Enhancement Shaman in your group, Blade of Wrath becomes even more useful. Um, if you don't have an Enhancement Shaman, then at two targets you can potentially swap over to Empyrean Power. So Empyrean Power, you pretty much just play on cleave fights, fights like Surrender Dormazane, Fate Scribe to some extent, um, even on Sylvanas you can get away with it. But keep in mind that anytime you play Empyrean Power, you gain AoE, so overall damage, but you will lose out on single target aka boss damage. Um, so that is a trade that you need to be willing to make whenever you stop playing Blade of Wrath and you pick up Empyrean Power. Then in the third tier, it doesn't matter what you play, Blinding Light has a couple of good uses on fights where you can actually CC the adds. Um, so for example, on Fate Scribe, you can use it as an AoE interrupt. Same thing on KT, you can use it as like an AoE mini CC uh, to force the adds to refixate. Um, then in tier 4, I always just play Unbreakable Spirit. Tier 5, Seraphim, default choice. You never change away from it. Um, then tier 6, most players will choose to play Healing Hands, especially now that we can have uh, more conduits. You can always play the conduit that gives you a shield whenever you Ward of Glory. Um, so Healing Hands is just super useful. Selfless Healer can be useful situationally, but I just recommend playing Healing Hands. Um, it's going to feel a lot better in most cases. And then in the last tier, Final Reckoning, in all cases, um, this just contributes to the minute build that we play. Essentially, every single minute we will have cooldowns and do a ton of damage. So this is kind of the talent setup that you will run most of the time. Next, let's talk about the Covenants. So fortunately for Red Paladin, you want to play Kyrian for everything. PvP, PvE, Raiding, Mythic+. Plus. You just want to be Kyrian because it's strong. Then for the Soulbind, you want to play Pelagos once you have it fully unlocked. This is because there are a few traits that are extremely strong um, and synergize really well with our damage. Um, so this is kind of the talent tree for Soulbinds that you want to go down. One of the strongest ones is Newfound Resolve. Once you have it unlocked, if it lines up with your Chaos Bane proc and your Burst, you will do a ton of damage. It does rely on some RNG, but I will talk about that a little bit in the DPS or the rotation section. For conduits, you will run triple potency. The first one that you want to have is ringing clarity. This one essentially just makes your divine toll to have a chance at casting itself extra times. Um, so you will see that in your opener or whenever you cast divine toll, sometimes you will get one holy power from it. Other times you will get four holy power from it. Um, and that is because of this conduit. So this is extremely strong. Generally, you will roll somewhere in the middle. Um, and the higher you roll on your Divine Toll, the more damage you do in your opener. So it's a little bit RNG, but generally a very, very strong conduit. Second one that you will take is Templar's Vindication. Uh, Templar's Verdict has a chance to cast itself again for 30% of its damage. Um, it's just, again, RNG, extra damage that you can get. And lastly, you will play Virtuous Command. Uh, Judgment will grant you a buff, which will cause your Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, Blade of Justice, and Auto Attacks to deal additional Holy Damage. Uh, since we cast Judgment a lot more often, and with the new Legendary becomes a higher priority than it was previously, 
you will actually have a pretty high uptime on this buff. Then for your Endurance Conduit, you will want to play Condensed Anima Sphere. This one is really strong for just healing you passively throughout a fight. On fights where you're constantly taking passive damage, uh, this is extremely strong. On fights where you just take damage once in a while, like once every minute, once every 45 seconds, something like that, it's less useful, but generally you still want to play it for like every encounter. Um, then the second endurance, you will play Shielding Words. Whenever you cast Word of Glory, you gain a shield. Um, this one super strong for just you know healing yourself. Whenever you walk yourself at low HP, it's almost like a lay on hand. So it can definitely help you stay alive on certain fights. Then for the one finesse conduit, I would just recommend playing Lights Barding. It makes your Divine Steed last forever. Um, and with our, our already limited mobility, um, it makes it a actually pretty good tool to get around encounters. So that's pretty much what you need to have as far as Covenants, Soulbinds, and Conduits go. Next, let's take a look at gearing. So first up, the Legendary. For every single boss, you want to run the Divine Resonance Legendary. This is the one that you get at Renown 48. Um, and make sure that you craft it on your waist because the other slots that you could craft it on are domination slots and you don't want that. So just make sure you have a belt with Divine Resonance. Uh, for stats, you're safe putting Haste Mastery on it generally, um, but depending on what your stats are at the moment, that can change. However, I just recommend going with Haste Mastery since that's a pretty default stat that you will always uh, want to have. Next for the Shards of Domination, there are five shards that you want to have equipped. Um, I only have four of them right now because I don't have a chest piece with Domination Socket. But the Helm you will always want to have because that's what activates your Unholy set. So you want the three Unholy Shards, then you want a Frost Shard of Core and a Blood Shard of Beck. Um, and it doesn't matter which one goes in which socket as long as you have the Helmet. Um, you have three Unholy Shards, one Blood, one Frost equipped. That is the best setup that you can go for. Next, I wanted to mention the weapons a little bit. So high eye level weapons are always better. Um, the one exception to this rule, kind of, is Jathus. So a heroic level Jathus, fully upgraded, is about the equivalent to a mythic level weapon. Um, however, a mythic level Jathus is just the best weapon you can have in the game. Um, so if you can get that, you know, always pick that out of your weekly vault. Uh, but just keep in mind that at heroic eye level, so at 246, fully upgraded, um, Jathus is as good as a mythic weapon. Now, lastly, talking about trinkets a little bit, there are two or three passive trinkets that you can run. Um, a very good choice is Old Warrior Soul. So this will ramp up haste, especially on bosses where you bloodlust on pull. Um, so you, on pull, you don't need the extra haste because you have bloodlust. Um, this trinket is very good because then by your, the time you pop your second or third set of cooldowns, it will be fully ramped. Um, another pretty decent passive trinket actually comes from Tazavesh, and it is the Ticking Sack of Terrors. Let me see if I can find it. Um, trinkets. It's this one from the Mail Room boss. Um, it's Mastery, and then it has a proc that deals damage. It actually does a ton of damage. So if you can pick this trinket up, it's also pretty good. But those are kind of the two main trinkets that I would look at getting. Um, besides that, there are a few others that are get pretty close to them, but are not quite as good. Now for your unused trinket, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. You do need to PvP. The badge that you can get which is a one minute cooldown it gives you a ton of main stats for 15 seconds is extremely strong and this is because paladins have a one minute cooldown build so every minute we have a small burst window every two minutes we have a large burst window with avenging wrath so having this trinket every single time you have your cooldowns up makes a huge difference and the difference between having this trinket versus any other on use or like a second passive trinket is pretty large. Um, I know a lot of PvE players don't like to PvP, but if you need to go out of your way, 
just spend a week or two trying to get this, even if it's at like, you know, 1800 rating, um, doesn't necessarily need to be the 2100 rated one. You just need to have the badge. Um, it will make a huge difference to your DPS. Lastly, for gearing, let's talk about stats. Mainly, you just want to have high item levels. So on specific pieces, you don't necessarily need to look for specific stats. Just go for whatever the highest eye level items you have. Um, I've seen on logs a ton of different stat weights. A lot of people play high haste, high mastery, high crit. Um, I've seen it all. Haste, mastery, and crit are generally your most useful stats. Then versatility um, comes in fourth. But if you have the choice between two items and one has haste, mastery, the other one has some other stats, but it's higher eye level, generally go for the higher eye level one just because main stat will make a pretty big difference. Next, let's talk about the rotation and specifically the opener. So the opener is going to be important that you learn and practice until you have it down to muscle memory because the opener is essentially how you play this class every minute. And then between your cooldowns, you're just kind of pressing all your buttons that are available. So for the opener, you want to run in and on pull, use all of your holy power building abilities that you have. So your judgment, your blade of justice, and your crusader strikes in that order. Once you've used all of them, you will be at maximum holy power. And this is where you go into your cooldown rotation. So first thing you will want to pop is Seraphim and Avenging Wrath. You can use these together. Um, and as soon as you use them, you will spend three holy power, but your Hammer of Wrath becomes active and ready to use. So you want to cast Hammer of Wrath, followed by Final Reckoning. Now with your Final Reckoning, you can actually use your Potion and your Trinket. Um, your If you're using the Badge Trinket, you should absolutely have it uh, like macro together with Final Reckoning. It makes it a lot easier. And if you're using like a Strength Potion on pull or five minutes into the fight, you also want to use that whenever you cast Final Reckoning or before. Now after Final Reckoning, the next thing you will want to cast is Execution Sentence. At this point, you will be at zero holy power. So now we want to use Divine Toll to build up as much holy power as we can with a single global. And if you high roll, Divine Toll is the most holy power you can build. Um, if you low roll, it's the equivalent of a single judgment. So ideally, you will get at least three holy power from your Divine Toll, which will allow you to cast a Templar's Verdict. Right after that, you can Wake of Ashes, which will give you three holy power and Templar's Verdict again. Now, once you've cast all of those abilities, this is where you look back at your holy power builders and kind of see what you have available. Um, a lot of times, Hammer of Wrath and Blade of Justice are kind of your best bets for building more holy power to get more Templar's Verdicts in. Um, judgment also. The, during your ES window, you typically don't really want to cast Crusader Strike because it does almost no damage um, and it only generates one holy power. So you ideally want to maximize the amount of holy power you generate and the amount of damage you do in the short execution sentence window that you have. Now, once your execution sentence is over, you just go into pressing your buttons um, and you just want to build holy power with your three builder abilities and spend them with Templar's Verdict. Um, then if everything is on cooldown, you can drop Consecration. So let's see what this actually looks like in practice. On a pull, at zero, you will want to cast Judgment as you go in, then Blade of Justice, Double Crusader Strike. I actually got a Blade of Justice reset there, so I'm going to Seraphim, Wings, cast Blade of Justice and Hammer, then Final Reckoning, Execution Sentence, Divine Toll, Templar's Verdict, Wake of Ashes, Templar's Verdict, Hammer, Templar's Verdict, and that's it. My ES window is over. So from here on out, I just want to use everything as it comes up without overcapping my Holy Power. With the Divine Resonance Legendary, you kind of have to be careful. Um, make sure you have some way of tracking when the ticks of Divine Resonance actually happen so that you're not overcapping on Holy Power by mistake. Because, for example, if you're sitting at three Holy Power, you can think to yourself that, okay, I can just Blade of Justice here, but if a tick of Divine Resonance is about to happen, that means that you will instantly gain three Holy Power instead of the two that you were expecting, so you will just have one that's wasted. Then from there on, you the rotation is super simple, and you're essentially just playing and waiting for your next set of cooldowns to come up. 
When your next set of cooldowns come up, um, you want to press the Seraphim about three to four seconds before everything else comes off cooldown and then build to five holy power. Then you can execution sentence, final reckoning together, um, divine toll, and just do your burst opener again. The most important thing that you can do as a retribution paladin is keeping on top of your cooldowns. As they come up, you want to use them. Because if you ever run into a situation where you are um, essentially wasting time by you know having all your cooldowns available and not using them, you end up desyncing. So if on pool you use everything together, but then your second set you delay by about 10 seconds, you will have to delay your third set by 10 seconds. Uh, and throughout a fight that actually tends to add up, and eventually if it's a long enough fight you might actually lose out on a use of cooldowns or your cooldowns are not going to be up at a point where you want them to be. Um, so it's very important that you kind of know um, when your cooldowns are coming up. For example, this is my two minute coming up right now. I'm going to again do what I did in the opener. And as soon as everything comes off cooldown, I am pressing it and getting in the burst damage. Um, so as a red paladin, most of your damage will happen during the burst windows. And then in between, you will do kind of little... Um, it, it's very little damage, so optimizing the amount of damage you do during your cooldowns is extremely important. All right, next I want to talk about a few nuances that you can have with your rotation within your cooldowns. Now, the last thing that you can min-max when it comes to your cooldowns is Chaos Bane and the new Soulbind trait, a newfound resolve that we have. Chaos Bane is a little bit more difficult, and I generally recommend that you just ignore it. Um, and just use your cooldowns as soon as they're up. However, if you're at like 14 stacks, for example, um, and you're about to proc a Chaos Bane, you can delay your cooldowns a few seconds to try to fish for a proc. The other main thing is this newfound resolve with the Trial of Doubt. So as you can see, it's behind me. It just procced randomly. Um, but you don't necessarily need to instantly face towards it when this happens. Let's say you have 10 seconds before your cooldowns come off um, and you just procced a newfound resolve. You can actually delay and wait to face towards the little minion uh, to get the strength buff until your cooldowns are just about up. Um, and that's going to make sure that you have a huge strength boost for the duration of your cooldowns. Um, and that's something that you can kind of play around with a little bit. Again, it is RNG, sometimes it will proc, sometimes it won't proc. Um, but if you see it proc and your cooldowns are about to come up, maybe in 5 seconds, 10 seconds, you don't necessarily need to instantly face towards it. You can actually wait a few seconds, then face towards it as the debuff is about to run out to make sure that you get strength for your burst. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the AoE rotation, which fortunately for us is super simple. You just replace Templar's Verdict, with Divine Storm as your spender. That's it. There's nothing extra to it. Just press Divine Storm instead of Templar's Verdict and you're doing AoE. If you're using Zeal, then obviously right after you drop Final Reckoning, you can instantly go into a Divine Storm, then Divine Toll. Uh, but since you will be running Execution Sentence for every raid boss, that is not all that relevant. Thank you so much for watching this guide and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below i am more than happy to help you out um if you want to chat a little bit about red paladin you can also join my discord which is linked in the description box and if you want to have early access to videos such as this one or some other cool perks you can check out my patreon again thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one Bye bye